What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Zoe with No Days Off DFS here to bring you another WNBA slate breakdown for the three game WNBA slate. As you can see on the screen, we already had a 1 uh, 1130 game earlier. The Sun taking on the Dream. Sun won that game, of course, as you would expect. It was a showdown slate, so of course, no, I did not cover it. Like I said yesterday, if you guys were able to tune into the live stream, your boy had to work. So I was not going to be able to uh, do a cover for that one. I worked last night, so tired early in the morning. Was not going to be able to get anything out for that. But. Of course, as always, I will cover the main slate. If you're new here and you guys enjoying the content, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the stuff that we're putting out over here on the No Days Off channel. And be sure to drop a like. It lets me know that you guys are enjoying the video and content that we're putting out here. Um, if you guys want my player pool, my cores, anything that we got out, my boy BK, he's been dropping props, left and right breakdowns, all that other stuff as well. We got um, golf going on this week, MLB, everything, you name it. We got it over here on the Patreon. Check the link down in the description below. It's only 10 bucks. I promise you. you make that back within your first week. Going over here, looking at the injury report for the teams, we got the Sparks taking on the Minnesota Lynx. As always, and of course, still, without a doubt, Lexi Brown is still dealing with that stomach bug issue that she's had for quite some time. What that issue is, I honestly don't know. Uh, Jenny, again, of course, her foot, she probably might want to retire and go ahead and just continue her broadcasting career. Don't know what's going on with that, but she misses more games than she plays a season for the past, what, three, four years now. Uh, Cloudin, she's still out, so... Uh, same old, same old in regards to the players and starters that we should expect. For, <laughs> as you see, my wife just waved to you guys. Uh, so same old, same old for the starters and everything that we should see for the uh, Sparks. The biggest thing, of course, is going to know whether or not if Hamby is going to come back into the starting lineup and they're going to move Stevens back to the bench. That, that should be the only change that we should know and have before the slate locks. Hopefully we get that starting lineup. Going over to the Minnesota Lynx. Um, same for them. It says Eric Powell, she's a game time decision, and uh, Achanwa, but that's been like that for quite some time. Um, other than that, Banham, she's still out with that uh, wrist, and we already know what the Lynx should be doing in regards to that uh, that line, and for, for them anyway, simply just because we just seen it, what, uh, two days ago, if I'm not mistaken. Going over to the Sky taking on the Phoenix Mercury, you always know we always got to get the Phoenix Mercury on the slate, and hopefully this game can actually stay close. Um, looking at it, it looks like Diana Taurasi is the biggest news over here from this game. She's going to be out. Um, looks like they decided to to let her sit after she had, I want to say it was a quad injury that she sustained in that last game. So DT is going to be out. Um, so that should mean that we get to see our girl, Anya Wene. She should be slid into the starting lineup. That's typically what they do when DT misses. And um, she's just sliding to that small forward-ish spot. I would be surprised if they start Shug or, or anything like that. But definitely we want to get the news on that lineup. Um, we, we've seen a couple of things left and right with that one, man. I'll, I'll pull up line star and we'll look at the um, projected, not not projected starters, but see whenever Diane Tarsi has missed uh, what the rotations and stuff has been for that. Give us a better idea. For the Sky, it's the same old, same old, nothing to report for them. For the Aces, Candace Parker still out, so we already know that Keith Stokes is going to be slid into the starting lineup. Stokes is going to start at the center position. Uh, Asia, she's going to be at the power forward. Same guard starters as always. And then over here for the Seattle Storm, they have no injuries to report. Nothing, nothing for them. Um, hopefully, this will be their starting lineup that they roll out besides um, Horston. Horston, it's either Horston or a fan cam. One of these two are going to be on the bench because you already know Jewel Lloyd. She's going to be the starting point guard. Um, no reason why Lloyd is not going to start. She's not injured or anything like that. But that was the last lineup that they rolled out before the all-star break. That was a curveball on that slate right there. Looking at the Phoenix Mercury, their minute rotations. The last time Diana Taurasi missed was here on July the 7th. And in that game, we did see Anya Wenner. She did start. Mariah Jefferson started. Brittany Griner, uh, Brown Turner, and Sophie Cunningham. I would not be surprised if that is the starting lineup once again. And, of course, as always, uh, Onion getting the start. That's typically a good thing for us. We normally do like, uh, like whenever that happens. If we want to go further, looking down a little bit uh, further down the line, granted, Diana, um, Brittany Griner was out also in this game. Um, during this time frame as well, but still we saw Anya Wene, she did start in all of those games as well uh, during this this time frame as well, but still uh, just going off with the last time that Diana Taurasi, she did miss, this was a game of rest, so she wasn't injured or anything like that, Shea Petty, she was still there uh, Shug, she was still there as well, she got some decent run off the bench, but they did put Onion into the starting lineup, and considering um, let's see, who their matchup is going up against the Sky uh, it's a small lineup, but not a small lineup. Elizabeth Williams and Elena uh, Smith, they're they're decent uh, power forward um, center combination. So I could definitely see Onion being slid in there to the small forward spot. She's going to get that Kalia Copper matchup. Uh, definitely should be able to have a decent game going up against that. Brown Turner, she's going to be back down here at the power forward spot. Don't believe what you see right here. Uh, if you guys want to understanding the um, starting lineups, just uh, 
pin me down in the comment section. I'll let you guys know exactly who should be starting where because um, looking at these things, it's always very confusing looking at that. All right, going over to DraftKings, a site that I'd be winning the money on, the site that has been good to us all season. If you guys would like to join me over here on the King, check the link down in the description below so you guys get that deposit match bonus and join me over here on the King. Going to the first game on the slate, we got the Sparks taking on the Minnesota Lynx. We already know where it starts, begins, ends, everything. Just just everything for the Sparks. That's going to be with NECA. NECA is sitting at 10 6. It's kind of been a while since we, we've actually had her down this price range. We see that they had priced her up to that 12 11 k range for a couple of games before uh, going up against the Aces. They dropped her back down to 10 6. And even in that game, she still dropped 37.75 fantasy points. This right here. I don't believe that this is going to be a bad spot for uh, NECA once again. She's going to be going up against um, Dorka at that center position. Definitely should be a spot that we get to see NECA go out there and assert her dominance. They've already played three times this season. In those two games, she eclipsed over 30 fantasy points in uh, two of those games. And then one game in 33 minutes, she only got us 29 fantasy points. Only scored eight points in that game. Uh, but the other two games, she scored over 20, well, scored 20 points in those games and also pulled down some pretty decent rebounds and got a couple of assists. If they want to win the game, they want to do what they do. Of course, we already know it's going to run through NECA. Um, typically, centers have had pretty good games going up against the uh, Minnesota Lynx anyway. Definitely uh, building blocks, someone that you can look at confidently and go ahead and, and lock in NECA into your lines, especially in catch games. Coming out here, Azura Stevens. Like I said, it's going to depend on whether or not if Stevens is going to start. Um, but I still believe that she should definitely get her minutes. As we do know, they are still missing uh, Chenny. Chenny was the other rotation that they had for the um power forward slash center rotation uh, for them so it's just that three-headed monster again with NECA Stevens and Hamby taking all those power forward and center minutes right there so when one of them is off the court one of these three are going to be out there anyway uh, Hamby uh, as we've seen looks like her minutes they were kind of trending back down she was stagnant and whatnot and then we got to see actually uh, Stevens she she took a, a big bump over those last couple of games giving us 30 fantasy points in four straight games uh, to before the season ended. That's why her price jumped up to 9,300. Now, I'm not going to say it's not uh, warranted. It's not a good spot. Um, not worth it at all because anytime uh, one of the unicorns on the slate, I definitely do like it. But looking at what her game logs have been, and this is with limited minutes. She played 10 minutes, 18 and 18 minutes. She didn't do too hot in those times that she did play. She only got 11 fantasy points, 19 and 9 fantasy points. I uh, definitely would take her more as a GPP right here in the spot just because I do feel like NECA is definitely going to be the one we want. If she, if they try to have Stevens going up against uh, Fee, definitely feel like this is a spot Fee can just dominate and just do what she does, uh, especially if she gets that Steven matchup. I'm not too worried about Stevens' uh, defense out there. And then even if she was to get Hamby, uh, Fee was cooking Hamby anytime that she got on her as well. So, um, mm, kind of a lean for me right there with Stevens. But if you want to come down from NECA, go down to Stevens. I don't expect the Lynx to be able to blow this game out. Looking at their games when they have played, Alexa Brandon didn't play in that one. It was, what, 61, 67, 72, 77, 86, 91. So all these games were pretty close. And the Sparks actually lost all of those games. This has 163 total, second highest total on the slate. So uh, interesting there. Definitely probably want to get some pieces from this game. But Stevens and Hamby, um, between those two, GPP play is not really something that I'm going to force into my line. Canada, oh, Canada, going right back to her. Um, didn't have really the best games to end the season uh, before the first half of the season ended, but we do know that Canada, she's pretty much the second fiddle. She had pretty decent games in all three of the games that they played going up against them. We do know that guards going up against the Lynx is definitely a spot that we want to attack. Definitely feel like we can put Canada into that pool. Sitting at 8-1, if you're not going to pay up for the guards in the uh, for the aces or you're not going to pay up for a Jewel Lloyd on the slate, Canada definitely is safe. Someone I would rather come down here to. Um, Clarendon, uh, Carly, Jasmine Thomas, kind of all tosses right there. I know Jasmine Thomas, she's been finally getting decent minutes. But the production still just hasn't been there for her. I don't, I'm not too sure if the break is even going to be enough for her. Not someone I'm going to rush or shove into my lines. Again, I am a firm believer in the you got to prove it to me before I'm going to believe it. Carly Samuelson, looking at her, decent price. Don't hate where she's sitting at in the three games going up against them. She's had some mediocre performances, but um, if they want it, we know that she can definitely get hot, get shooting. Maybe she can go out there and have a Sophie Cunningham type game. But um, not someone that I'm going to press into my lines, even though she's sitting at 5'9". I'm not going to hate it if you land on it, but uh, at least she won't get you a zero. And then the same thing for Clarendon. Clarendon being back, that's at least a bit of a boost for them. We, as you see, Clarendon hasn't played in, uh, since, what, way back when, back in um, June. So her being back probably is going to be less minutes, maybe for Zaya off the bench. We already know they cut uh, Henderson. She's gone. Maybe Jasmine Thomas, she might lose some of her minutes. But we got to see if they're going to actually put – uh, cleared it into the starting lineup right now line start doesn't have cleared it up here so i can't even pull up and see uh what she did in those games when they played because she did at least play 
Oh, no, actually, she didn't play none of the games that they played going up against the Lynx. Uh, she was already out then at that time. So we don't even have anything for Clarendon, but definitely want to see if she's going to be limited or anything like that. Uh, she suffered a partly torn rider plantar, fasci plantar fasciitis in June. So it um, all depends on if we get a minute limitation or something like that. Before she went down, she was playing decent uh, ball. Definitely was pretty consistent, except for in that, that one game where she got injured. So um, definitely will be something to look out for. Might I feel like she's going to mess more with the Carly Samuelson, Jasmine Thomas, Zaya Cooks, and Burrell. Uh, Canada, pretty sure she's safe, consistent in her role. Same thing for NECA. Those will be the two safer options from right there. Going over to the Minnesota Lynx, you already know. Starts, ends, begins. Same thing on this side for Fee. If you want to run a stack of um, NECA and Fee, kind of is a pretty nice building block to go ahead and start your lines up, lineup with. Uh, we already just seen it. Fee went out there, dropped 56.75 fantasy points, going up against the Land Dream last time they were on a slate. Uh, just the usage when you have a 20 plus what almost 25 percent usage rate for your team it's kind of hard to ignore uh, what she can go out there and do on a night in night out basis and all three games going up against them they have not had an answer for her kind of a, a lock ish cash games if you're looking at it just to consistency what she's going to play with they're playing at home definitely do like it Shepard's still out we already know what she's going to go out there and do uh, Lindsay Allen sitting at 7.9 again I want her price to come down just a little bit more before I go back to her just for the fact um not really producing too much. Again, we know she's going to uh, assist. She's going to get a couple of rebounds, stuff like that. But the scoring is the part that Lindsey Allen doesn't really bring to the table for us. So that's the part that I got to worry about whenever it comes down to anything for Lindsey Allen. So not really looking uh, there at Lindsey or Kayla McBride here. Even though we do know guards, they've had pretty decent games going up against the Sparks just for the fact of their defense is not anything to write home about. In the three games that she played going up against them, 25, 27, 14 fantasy points. Again, if you want to pay down from the guards, you don't want to pay it for Lloyd, uh, Plum, um, Chelsea Gray, Jackie Young, any of them. Kayla McBride, Lindsey Allen, definitely worth going to. Uh, coming out here, Don Miller. Again, it's just the minutes, man. I, I, we're going we're gonna to get the correct Don Miller game. Not too sure when it's going to actually be. It's, it's one of those things where you see a rookie that has the potential, but they're just not giving the rookie the minutes to actually go out there and do it. Let her make the mistakes. Let her go ahead and learn. This is a re rebuilding year for the Lynx. It, it shouldn't even matter uh, for them in regards to how – poorly she's playing whenever she's getting fouls or things like that it shouldn't but yet they seem to kind of tilt their hat and really worry too much about that and pull her uh, left and right whenever i personally don't think that you you should be caring too much in regards to that that aspect coming out here to dorka looking at dorka sitting there at seven five again cheap uh maybe rather play hamby in this spot sitting at seven five um she's had decent games going up against them in two out of the three games and that one game she only played eight minutes in here she might have got injured uh quite honestly don't remember but 22 and 29 minutes in those two games decent but not something i feel you got to shove into your lineups and then we already know Milik off the bench she's going to get at least about 14 to 18 ish minutes she can produce in that time but at 5k if you land on it you can go ahead but mm, not really too much everyone else really uh on here not really anything that i'm worried about trying to get into my lineups uh tiffany mitchell first name back play 17 minutes didn't do nothing so we already know that's the gpp option right there not too much for us to go in uh, over there going over to the sky taking on the phoenix mercury one of the worst teams in the league you already know this should be a spot where the sky, the guard, should be able to go ahead and pop off, have decent games, uh, do great. Copper, Marbury, uh, Courtney Williams, all of them. All of them are in play in a spot. The power forward in the center position, Elena Williams, Elizabeth Williams, would be the two that I'd be like a little bit lean back on right there when it comes down to it. Um, Courtney Williams, she should have a bounce back spot for her to be able to actually do something. Um, either going to get the matchup of Mariah Jefferson or the Sophie Cunningham treatment, one of those two. I do firmly believe that Anya Wene, she will be on uh, – copper right there copper she might be able to do what she does out there but uh could could have some struggles out there depending on uh, what onion when decides to show up and if she actually her length gives her any trouble and difficulties out there looking at the sky i'm pretty sure this is not the first time that they have played for the season going to get yep they played uh earlier in the season on may 21st in 28 minutes copper only gave us 25 fantasy points so it was one of her down games um marbury she did not play in that game elena smith i know that she did she played 16 minutes only gave us 11 fantasy points and then courtney williams she played 37 minutes and gave us 31 fantasy points so in all honesty i'll be looking at marbury and courtney williams as the main two that i'll be looking at from the sky um, price point wise and just production wise courtney williams and marbury i go with marbury first just because the price is down and we do know that the phoenix mercury they do give up quite a bit of three-point shooting and that is marbury's specialty but she also does get a quite a bit with her assist and her rebounds and we do know she can bring it on the defensive side as well and just according to women's price at nine five that's a bit much i'd rather go ahead and pay for like a um kelsey plum or a um jackie young uh chelsea gray 
type price range right there if, if I'm going to go up right there. But definitely worth it. A GPP type play you can look at uh, right here. Has the matchup. Definitely the matchup is there uh, for them going up against the Phoenix Mercury. I'm not going to mess with the forwards. Uh, Dana Evans, price on there at 5.5. Finally, her price has definitely come back down to earth. I don't hate the price for her right here at 5.5. Definitely would be more inclined to go to her. In 34 minutes when she played going up against the uh, Phoenix Mercury, she dropped 24.5 fantasy points. Keep in mind, Marbury did not play in that game. So um, that is probably why she definitely got that boost in minutes. Everyone else, not really looking too much uh, out there because it's really just going to be concentrated into the the uh, starters and Courtney Williams and Marbury. Those are the two best plays that I see coming from that side. Going over to the Phoenix Mercury, without Diana Rossi out there, we already know more uses should go to Brittany Griner. Brittany Griner should be able to go out there and have a good game. But the question is, is Brittany Griner going to go out there and have a good game? Going up against Connecticut the Sun, went out there and she – Dropped a dud. Four of ten, five assists, five rebounds, two blocks, twelve points, twenty six point twenty five fantasy points. I don't know what it is with Brittany Griner this year, man, but it's just been frustrating day in and day out trying to roster her and forgot when she's gonna have a good game, when she's gonna pop off. This is nonetheless, it's still a pretty decent spot for her to go out here and have a good game. It's just gonna be, can we actually get that from her here today in this spot? Um, definitely a GPP play just for the way that she's been playing in her game going up against the, the sky early in the season. She did play 31 minutes and dropped 52 fantasy points. That was 27 points, 10 rebounds, 4 blocks, 1 assist, 1 steal. Um, definitely if you feel like this is a spot where she will be able to go out there and do that, looking at her history going up against the sky, keep in mind this is with Candace Parker there back in the past, things like that. Um, it's worth a GPP shot just because this was pretty much her ceiling game for the year. I can definitely understand fading Brittany Griner because it's not trustworthy. You really haven't been able to peg her, get her right throughout the season. But um, definitely a spot that we can possibly look to go into her. Mariah Jeff and Sophie Cunningham, both of them get boost with Diane Taurasi being out. Sophie Cunningham, if she can keep that hot shooting that she had in that last game, I definitely will be uh, wanting to go back to her because we finally got to see a breakout game, of course, when I wasn't on her. She played 19 minutes in the game, only gave us nine fantasy points. Um, she's not going to be the forward one. She should definitely be the two guard in this matchup. I don't hate the spot for her. I don't mind it, but uh, Anyone, that's that's honestly the one that I want to go to. Typically, whenever we have seen um, anyone out or if they get blown out, stuff like that, she still gets to see decent minutes and decent runs. She played 30 minutes in that game going up against them. Only gave us 12 fantasy points, but uh, still GPP type play. Of course, sitting at 7 1, we do have Hamby around that price range and other plays we can go to, but. Should start, should see decent minutes, and we know if she can go ahead and get it going, she's going to have a pretty good game. Going to draw that copper matchup. Um, should definitely be defending her on the defensive side, and uh, I do like her here. Definitely, if you don't want to play, Brittany Griner can definitely come out of her. And then if you want to take a chance on Brianna Turner, we do know if Brittany Griner's not going out there doing anything, Turner's going to get the rebound, she's going to get the block, she's going to get the steals and all the other stuff. She relies all on that. GPP play, you typically will not see me put Brianna Turner into my line, but she will make the player pool. The guards off the bench, I'd say, to me, Petty. She has a better spot than um than Shug just because Petty, if she can actually get a score to go, she'll put up a decent number. Uh, Sutton has been kind of hit or miss, really, in regards to what she's doing. She did put up a fantasy point per minute in that last game. 15 minutes, she gave us 15 fantasy points. Not really too much to write home about. Mm, not too high on my radar right now. Going up against them, she played 30 minutes and she dropped 21 fantasy points. If you want to chase that, definitely you can go to that. But at 5'7", uh, we do got other spots that we can target and attack versus going to that right there. So um, not something that is a priority for me um, on today's slate. Going over to the last game on the slate. Before we do that, if you guys are stuck with me so far and you guys have made this far, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the uploads. And thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button if this information is helping you in any way, shape, or form. Talk to me down in the comment section. Let me know who do you guys feel like is the the best high price stud on today's slate and in the best position to break the slate that you have to have inside your lines. Uh, so far, I've covered a couple of them that are in definitely really great spots. Is it going to be NECA? Is it going to be Fee? Or are we going to come down here to this last game going up against the Storm and the Las Vegas Aces where we have to worry about the blob? Is that going to be due to Asia Wilson just popping off? Or maybe it might be Jackie Young and uh, Kelsey Plum. One of these two, somebody's going to go ahead and deliver for us on today's slate. Let me know who you guys think that's going to be. Coming over here, of course, I'm not going to be the dead horse whenever it comes to the Las Vegas Aces. All five starters are in consideration to be played on a night in night out basis. When you're looking at the guards, just look at the pricing right now. Kelsey Plum is priced way too high for a player that relies a lot on her scoring. I'd rather play Jackie Young and then Chelsea Gray because one of those two, they will have a pretty decent game, good game. As long as the game stays close enough, but the safer one will be Jackie Young because we know even if the game blows out, Jackie Young is still going to be out there on the court. She still goes ahead and plays even with the bench mob um, of Bell, Colson, Kayla George, all of them. She will still play. Uh, we know the rotation and minutes are going to be there for both Clark and Stokes due to the fact that Ken Spark is out. So you got Stokes. She's going to be slid into the starting lineup. If you want to come down there for the 6-2 value of Stokes, 
decent matchup going up against fan cam and easy down there uh the box will be there rebounds will be there definitely can go for it asia wilson this is where you got to make a decision do i have to pay up this much for asia wilson on the slate i'm pretty sure that they have played early in the season if i am not mistaken actually they did play early in the season and in that game asia she played 27 and 29 minutes so of course we already know that the game Definitely was out of hand. 96 and 63 in that first, um, second game. 105 to 64. And she still put up 35 and 38 fantasy points. If you feel like you want to pay that much for a 10-9 player, go right ahead. Uh, but definitely think that we might just find some value in the guards. Uh, Chelsea Gray, she was a part of that. She brought 32 fantasy points in both of those games. Kelsey Plum popped off in the first game. Second game, not so much at 10-4. I want that first game um, scoring from her. 23 points, 5 rebounds, uh, 5 assists, 1 steal, and knocked down 3 threes. So, if you're going to pay 10 for, for uh, Plum, you're going to want this first scoring game from her, not not the second one. That's why I'm more on Jackie Young, just because she was consistent in both of those blowout games for us. She played 26 and 27 minutes, dropped 23 and 28 points. I don't feel like uh, Kia Nurse is going to be able to stay with her. She's definitely going to be able to go out there, do her thing like she always says whenever she's on the court. I'd rather go ahead and play uh, Jackie Young. She is, to me, the safest out of all of them. Then it'll be Chelsea Gray. Um, yeah, Chelsea Gray, followed by Kelsey Plum, and then uh, Asia Wilson, if I got to go in that order for them. Going over to the Storm side, of course, like I said, Jewel Lloyd, she should be slid right back into the starting lineup. That was just uh, right before the All-Star break where they went ahead and they put, um, they went ahead and rested her in that last game after she popped off in the game prior. But Jewel Lloyd going up against the Aces in the first game, played 29 minutes, she dropped 22 points, two blocks, uh, four rebounds, four assists, one steal, gave us 40 fantasy points. At 10-1 in a game that possibly will blow out, considering that the Las Vegas Aces are 16.5 favorites. We're always favored this heavy. I mean, they're the juggernaut of the WNBA. Uh, we might end up with her playing 35 minutes and only giving us 23 fantasy points. We do know that the guards for the Aces, they're actually pretty good on the defensive side. So um, it's this coin flip right there. Uh, Jewel Lloyd, I would never say to fade her because in the games that I've, I've thought to even fade her, she went ahead and she popped off. So uh, it's kind of a do if you will, do if you don't. I wanted to f I faded her in this game going up against Washington because of the defense they brought, and she dropped 39 points on the head. So um, definitely take that in consideration for this. She is definitely a GPP play. Easy. Uh, she popped off in the second game, not the first game. It's been a mixing pot in regards to what she's done. Over these last couple of games, since they put fan cam into the starting lineup, it's been hit or miss in regards to what she's bringing to the table out there. I would definitely say I want to see it to believe it again in Easy. Uh, her shot has not been there. She's scoring very poorly out there. The last game played 26, 26 minutes, took eight field goals, missed all of them. Only got any fantasy points because she got some rebounds, some blocks, and some assists. That was it. Um, I definitely need to see the scoring easy that we're seeing early in the season before I can even hop back on that, especially at a 9-2 price tag when I could probably just go to Azora Stevens, who I know is going to get the minutes to run and possibly the production for us out there on the slate. Gabby Williams, we know she's back. She's played only two games so far in those games. She played 24 and 20 uh, minutes. I expect her minutes to be bumped up maybe like 28-ish uh, out there for her. Scored a couple little bit in that last game. Sitting here at 7K, not a bad price. Definitely a GPP play, but not someone that I feel like you got to shove into your lineup. Ivana, uh, she's been here to miss in regards to what she's been bringing to the table out there over the last couple. For me, I'm going to be honest, uh, Dorka, she's pretty much just been on a steady decline. Not something that I'm running and rushing to. Another play that we got to see, get back in the groove before I want to hop back on that train. Horson looked very decent in that game without Lloyd. Looks like she's definitely the second fiddle out there whenever it came down to it. Um, in the two games going up against them, she played 24 and 22 minutes. Definitely what I would expect her minutes to be in this game right here today will be right around that 20, 25-ish minute range just because they got players back. Uh, Lloyd is definitely going to be playing, so she's not going to be the focal point of the team in this game right here. Uh, so mm, at 8-5, not really someone that I'm prioritizing in my, uh, my lineups today just because of the price, but definitely would be a GPP play, especially if the game was to get out of hand. She could get some uh, some decent uh, blowout run right there in this game. Kia Nurse, I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole. Uh, proof is in the pudding. Sammy Whitcomb, GPP play, another play that you can consider, but not someone I'm running to. I really am going to focus on playing fan cam just because in the two games, she only played 3 and 11 minutes. Nothing really right home about, but before the, the All-Star break, she was getting decent run, decent minutes, and she looks productive out there in the time that she's playing. As um, long as she's starting, I see no reason not to go back to her. Sitting at 6 7, I do like the price. I'll be going right back to her on today's slate. And if you want another GPP play, sitting at 4 5, Melbourne looks like she might have gotten back into the coach's good graces and might see some minutes again here in the spot. And the two games that she played going up against them, six minutes didn't do anything going up against the Aces in those games at all. 
All right, guys, that's going to be the breakdown right here. If you guys are looking for another breakdown, my boy BK, he should be posting something later on today. Props have already been put out for a lot of the uh, the stuff. Lines have been bumped left and right. Definitely check the Patreon down in the link below. Ten bucks, you make that back within your first week. With that being said, talk to me down in the comment section. I will see you guys tomorrow for the big slate that we have uh, for Friday. Good luck. See you guys in green. It's your boys up.